Hello everyone, this is Jericho, the Sword Seeker. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Geralt of Rivia, a.k.a. The Witcher. Now, Netflix has recently released a show based on the books and the video games, although they're not going to say that they took anything from the video games. It's pretty clear that Henry Cavill, the actor who plays Geralt, um, took a lot of inspiration from the video games. Um, in the way he talks, even in the way he fights. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, in this. If you're like me, then your first exposure to Geralt of Rivia is through the video games. Um, I first played Witcher 2. Um, after that, I played a little bit of Witcher 1, but the clunky controls and the graphics just took me out of it. But when Witcher 3 came out, um, yeah, there, that's when I really jumped into um, the Witcher series. I also read a bit of the books um, a few years ago, but I really didn't uh, get too much into it. Um, most of my exposure is just uh, reading uh, online and, of course, uh, playing the video games. But I'm not here to talk about Geralt's backstory, his lore, um, his history. Uh, there are a lot of other people out there who can talk about that uh, much better than I can. What I will talk about, however, is how Geralt fights, um, how I relate to him personally as a swordsmanship practitioner. And if you want to get started on being a witcher or moving like one at least, I can teach you the signs and stuff like that, um, what you can do to get started on your training. So in both the video games and the Netflix series, um, Geralt of Rivia is shown to be moving a lot. Um, a lot of pirouettes, turns, um, his sword attacks are continuous, um, he flows like water. Um, and I guess it's really the, the hallmark of uh, being a witcher. Um, it's said and mentioned in the books and in the video games that the reason why uh, a witcher, uh, or specifically Geralt, um, does a lot of pirouettes and spins and turns is because he can do it in the same amount of time it'll take one person to swing normally so somebody who swings normally like this okay um the witcher can spin and do an attack uh just as fast so the concept there um is that by spinning the witcher generates a lot of power uh rotational force and pretty much can cut through, um, I guess, a normal human being in one stroke. And if you've seen the net, uh, the Netflix show, it does happen. I mean, in one instance, uh, when Renfri blocks uh, a downward strike, um, she actually falls to her knees, and the blow goes through her block to hit her shoulder. Um, Geralt also does a spin movement um, to do an overhead block straight to a cut, to an opponent's torso and he does other spins and uh, pirouettes uh, again in her uh, in his fight against uh, Renfri. So that kind of fighting style with a lot of, lot of pirouettes, lots of movement um, is suited for a witcher's uh, biology. Um, for those who don't know yet, witchers are mutants. They have superhuman speed and strength. So while it might be quite impractical or tiring uh, for normal people to do that. Uh, for a witcher, it's no problem. Um, he can just leap forward, do a 360 pirouette, ending on a downward cut. And it would be similar to somebody who's just stepping forward with a regular cut. Um, that's pretty much how witchers fight. So if we try as normal human beings to do the exact same things in a real fight, we'll probably get hit um, in sparring. Or if it's a real uh, sharp sword fight, then we'll probably end up dead. But for Geralt of Rivia, the Butcher of Blaviken, the White Wolf, it's really no problem at all. Now, before we begin uh, talking a little bit about how you can start uh, training or getting conditioning to move and fight, like a witcher, let's discuss a little bit about swords. And the actor 
uh, who plays Geralt of Rivia on the Netflix show. This is an example of a sparring sword that we use in my gym. Uh, it's locally made. It's uh, based on um, a blunt sword, okay, uh, what's called a feather shirt in uh, historical European martial arts. Um, they weigh the real thing. And let me tell you, it there is a lot of momentum when you swing. Um, when you swing it with one hand, especially, you will feel the sword wanting to really move. Um, but if you do it properly, you know, with some uh, good mechanics, you can make the sword flow. Okay. Um, pretty easy. But in the Netflix show, specifically episode one, both Geralt and Renfri attack so fast. Uh, they swing their swords like they weigh nothing. Like they're an extension of their... Uh, their own hand. Uh, Henry Cavill uh, who plays Geralt and Emma Appleton who plays Renfrey. I'm pretty sure they went through very extensive training and conditioning to be able to move that quick in addition to a little bit maybe of camera trickery, some post-production editing. Nevertheless, whatever they're doing is not easy. I mean, speaking of Henry Cavill, you've probably already seen uh, his video clips online showing the workouts that he needed to do. Um, in order to portray Geralt of Rivia to get that really buff body and uh, for the visual aesthetic of it. But in addition to that, you know, the strength and the speed to be able to execute those choreographed moves and flow like water um, effortlessly. Um, and if you've seen some of his clips, it's very intense. Now, Henry Cavill's workout routine is a very exciting prospect to try. However, um, just as a reminder, Henry Cavill went through extensive training to get the body and the conditioning and the strength and the speed that he already has um, on display on the Netflix show. Ever since he appeared in the Immortals movie, Henry Cavill was already jacked. So he probably was training uh, his whole life, uh, if not the better part of his whole life, um, to get that physically strong. So... Trying out the routine that he is showing at the intensity level that he is doing it might not be uh, a realistic or even safe option for beginners. Let's say you just picked up the video game, uh, saw the show, and suddenly decided, wow, I want to try uh, moving like a witcher, jumping quickly to Henry Cavill's workout routine. Um might be a challenging thing to do, too challenging uh, if you're starting from scratch. However, there's a, there's a way to get your training started. I can recommend some basic movements that will at least get you started on your Witcher training. So consider this a Witcher's for Beginners move, uh, workout. Just as a disclaimer, before we begin, all physical activity should be cleared by your doctor, especially if you've been diagnosed overweight or have uh, some other um, health issues and conditions. Um, it's always best to play it safe. Uh, it, it can get exciting, uh, you know, as a geek, trying out uh, physical activities for the first time, especially if the end goal is to uh, try and move like a witcher. But... You know, it's uh, safety first. Oh, you now what do you need to become a witcher? Um, at least the physical side of it. Physical attributes. Um, at least what do you need to possess or improve on in order to be able to move a little bit like a witcher? I feel, first of all, uh, what you need is to have cardiovascular endurance. Um, in both the video games and the Netflix show, uh, every time Geralt attacks or moves, it's like he doesn't really expend much energy. It takes very little effort for him to do so. So, in order to be a Witcher, cardio. That's one. Number two is core strength. Um, it might surprise some people to know that swinging a sword actually requires a lot of core strength. So, not only that, because Geralt of Rivia does a lot of pirouettes and spins, core strength is key. Now, number three is legs. In the Netflix show, Geralt is seen to be taking large lunges uh, when he attacks. Um, not only that, he also pirouettes as he, uh, 
as he does it. So basically having very strong legs or uh, conditioned legs to be able to move uh, your entire body quickly from one point to another all while attacking uh, is crucial. Number four, um, arm strength. Now this includes your shoulders, uh, your grip, your biceps. Um, in order to be able to control the sword uh, as you move and as you attack. You will feel the sword want to leave your hand as soon as you send it forward to an attack. It might not be seen that much in the Netflix show, but that's because A, witchers are portrayed to be very strong, and B, on a realistic standpoint, they're using prop swords that are light for safety reasons. Developing grip endurance, grip strength, um, it's definitely useful when training to become a witcher or at least move like one. And of course, shoulders are very important. Um, anybody who's done Arnis before or Olympic fencing or kendo or pretty much any other sport wherein your hands or your arms are moving like this constantly, you will uh, know that the shoulders will take a beating um, over time. And lastly, of course, our sword skills. Um, at the very least, how to properly throw cuts. Um, there are ways to learn sword flow skills even if you are at home or if you can attend a gym or if you have some background in Olympic fencing, uh, arnis, kendo, and so on. You probably have your basic um, sword angle strikes already. Uh, but making them flow continuously is the hallmark of a witcher. So, as beginners, what are the movements you can do to get started into your uh, witcher conditioning training or your witcher training in general? So for cardio, you can start with jump ropes. Um, it's a very popular movement. Um, boxers do a lot of it. Kids do it. Right? Um, it's a skill. It's a good skill to, to have as well because it promotes uh, coordination. Um, but if you can't do jump ropes just yet, uh, jumping jacks should suffice. Fun movement uh, that you can try are karaoke's. Um, it's like a dance. It um, sends your upper body pointing one way while your legs are stepping with a crossing step uh, pointed in another direction. Uh, that incorporates uh, the principles that Geralt uses when he does pirouettes, you know, the twisting of the upper body and the lower body. And Geralt of Rivia and witchers in general are very explosive. Um, they can quickly cover a distance, lunge in one step, and then change directions and attack another uh, opponent and so on. Um, so to promote um, explosiveness, um, you can try sprints and quickly stopping and then backpedaling as a way to recover. So sprint forward, stop, backpedal, rinse, repeat. It's a good way to get your heart pumping and at the same time, you know, develop explosive uh, strength on your legs. Uh, the speed of the sprints, of course, will vary depending on your physical condition. Um, you can start off slower and gradually improve or increase your speed and intensity. Um, again, safety first. Continuing with the leg strength, um, lunges are very good. It's easy to do. You can do it anywhere. You can even do it in your office. Space. Um, the way I like doing it is doing half a lap of regular forward lunges and then covering uh, the other half of the lap with jumping half lunges. The, the full walking lunges are deep. They give a uh, good leg burn uh, when you do so. And then the explosive half jumping lunges are a great way to just develop you know, explosive strength. Now for the upper body, uh, you can't go wrong with push-ups. Um, being able to do some push-ups uh, on a regular basis is a great way to develop your chest, your upper body strength. It also hits the shoulders and the arms depending on what kind of push-up you do. Um, but if you are not able to do full push-ups just yet, you can do uh, push-ups on a box or uh, on a chair at an angle, which will make it easier to do. Another uh, strength movement that you can try are suitcase walks. Um, doing so will uh, give your 
traps, your shoulders, your arms, your grip strength, your core, and your legs. Uh, good workout. So it's a, a full body workout. Um, it's a full body movement. Do it is to grab a weight with one hand and the other way, the other hand is free. Um, weight dangles on your side. Keep your back straight, your shoulders set, uh, chest up, and then just walk from point A to point B. So the good thing about this is you don't need uh, a kettlebell specifically or a dumbbell. Although, of course, if you have those, then it's so much better. Um, you can do this almost anywhere. Uh, grab some groceries. You can carry everything on your eco bag on one arm, switch as you go halfway and so on. This uh, next movement, um, you can use a sledgehammer. Um, in my gym, we use weighted clubs, um, but if you don't have access to that, it's fine. Um, for beginners, you can simply use a baseball bat um, if you have a small sledgehammer, uh, you can do this as well. So you can do sledgehammer swings. There are a lot of variations to this. You can check out uh, YouTube or go to your local gym. If a trainer knows how to do uh, club movements, then you can ask them. Um, in this example, I used a sledgehammer. Um, the good thing about using a sledgehammer with a long handle is that depending on the movement you use, you can actually adjust the weight. You can grab the sledgehammer um, closer to the end and it will feel heavier when you do the sledgehammer swings. Or if that's too much or if you're getting tired already, you can adjust your grip and hold it in the middle and it'll feel a little bit lighter. Sledgehammer swings are a great way to increase your shoulder conditioning, your shoulder strength. Personally, this is one of my most favorite workouts. Um, I try to include this every time it's uh, arms and shoulders day or, or, it's, or if it's upper body day. Uh, now lastly, uh, I include sword flow drills. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, being able to do sword flow drills uh, or sword flow movements rather are very important uh, if you want to be able to move like a witcher. Uh, but on a more practical uh, sense, I include sword flow drills simply because it's the movement that I do most of the time. As both an instructor and a practitioner of sword fighting, it's pretty much part and parcel of what I do. I want to be able to maintain my conditioning when it comes to uh, executing sword strikes and sword flow drills. So I include it in my workout. Um, you can do this as a way to cool down if you're doing it slowly or if you want to incorporate it as part of a interval training circuit, then you can do so as well. Now, of course, uh, depending on the amount of time you have in one day, uh, the equipment that you have at home, um, or the space wherein you will be working out, uh, you can pick which of these movements uh, you want to do uh, as a beginner. Uh, of course, there are some more complex movements available that you can do and incorporate into your uh, Witcher training program. Um, you can check out other YouTubers like Athlionex, include uh, specific uh, movements to your routine. But as a beginner, I really recommend that you start with the basics first um, and then get, take a look at the more complex movements and scale it up the moment you see results or, or feel results, most importantly, uh, from your routine. Personally, I stick with the basics. Um, I love uh, doing the workouts. The basic routines, uh, sword flow drills, I do the sledgehammer swings as often as I can, push-up squats, lunges, um, sprints, and so on. Um, so, so for beginners who might think, yeah, I, I'm doing a basic workout, no, oh, it's okay. Um, I prefer it. I, I do the basics a lot as well. Um, so there you have it. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's useful uh, to you. Um, just remember, uh, always stay safe when you try it. And on a more personal note, I have been trying to 
do a lot of Witcher related stuff that I'll be sharing with you guys soon. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Sword Seeker out.